Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, uh, January 17th, 2021. Uh, I am your lay reader, Zach Cosner. Um, I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found on our website, www.centralpresbyterian.com. If you click on the publications link, you can download the, uh, uh, you can scroll down the page, I should say, look for the uh, today's date. If you click on that, you should be able to access the uh, bulletin on uh, iPhones, tablets, iPads, or if you're on a computer, you can click that link, download it, and print it out uh, so you can follow along with today's worship service. Links to that bulletin can also be found in the description under this video on Facebook and on YouTube. Now that you've downloaded the bulletin for today's service, I invite you to uh, turn to the announcements found on the back of the bulletin. Uh, the session of CPC has decided to stick with virtual services for the foreseeable future. Keep in contact with us via social media or on our website for announcements about any special services or when we plan to resume in-person worship. Our username on social media is Central Prez PB. Archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and, our, and on our YouTube page. Links to each can be found on our website. Again, that's centralprezpb.com. Let us turn our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. When God is revealed to us, God invites us in saying, follow me, come and see. Having known us from the very beginning, God shapes us still saying, follow me, come and see. God uses our ordinary gifts in our everyday lives saying, follow me, come and see. God seeks our service with the gifts we have to give saying, follow me, come and see. God calls us ever deeper into the mystery of faith, saying, follow me, come and see. Jesus is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Please join me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin, first in unison and then silently. O oh Lord, you know us inside and out. We pretend that you see us from far away, that we can hide our selfish, selfishness from you. Yet you alone know the fickleness of our hearts, and you know even our words of repentance before we can form them. Forgive us and make us whole. Fill us with gratitude for our very being. Lay your hand on us and bless us, and give us words to tell the world of your wonderful works. And now silently. Amen. The good news in Christ is that we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need. We are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now let us turn uh, turn it over to Reverend. Excuse me, not Reverend. Excuse me. Let's turn it over to uh, Rose von Tunglin uh, for this week's children's sermon. Hello, everyone. I hope you've had a good week. Today, I want to talk about a time when I was a little girl. Probably, probably not real little, but when we were kids growing up, we had a big field that a bunch of us played ball on. And we would go down there after dinner on any night of the week, not just particular one particular night. We would go down there and we would play baseball. Now, we would choose teams, and I really don't remember quite how we chose teams, if we numbered off, or if we just had a captain, or if we, you know, just ch chose teams. But anyway, I was always kind of afraid I wouldn't ever get picked because... I was kind of scrawny when I was a little kid. Don't believe that, or whether you believe it or not, I was. So I was kind of wondering sometimes if I'd ever get picked. But we had a good time playing ball, and we had a good time with all our friends. And, you know, sometimes people pick people on, to go on teams by the way they look, or if they can run, or if they're good at whatever they're playing. But I want to tell you about a time whenever God decided that he was going to pick a king for Israel. 
So he sent the prophet Samuel to a man's house named Jesse and told him that one of his sons would be the king and to anoint him as the king. So Samuel went to Jesse's house and now Jesse had a bunch of boys and each one would come and up to Samuel and God would tell Samuel, no, this is not the one. Or, no, he's not the one. No, no, not this one. And after the last son had come to Samuel, Samuel asked Jesse, do you not have any other sons? And Jesse said, well, yes, I do have one, but he's just a boy and he's out in the fields taking care of sheep. And Samuel said, well, go get him. Well, sure enough, when David got there, God told Samuel, this is the king. Please anoint him as king of Israel. Now, you see, God doesn't really look to see how nice we look or how big we are. Thanks, Rose. Uh, now, uh, let us um, join together for today is uh, the first reading from the, the gospel for today. Uh, it is Psalm 139 verses 1 through 6 and verses 13 through 18. Um, o Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Before, even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it is you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes behind my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them, they are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Now for today's second scripture reading, which is uh, in the book of John, uh, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. Uh, let, us, uh, let us listen for the word of the Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me now, Philip. Excuse me, follow me. Now, Philip was from uh, Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, and in hearing we might believe, and in believing we might live lives richer and in fuller service to you, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified here in heaven. Amen. Uh, as you probably can tell by now, uh, Reverend Tim Reeves is, uh, uh, was unable to uh, record the service this week. Um, he is feeling a little bit under the weather. 
So he asked me to uh, fill in for him. So uh, this week's sermon is entitled, Where Heaven and Earth Meet. It has been my experience that the older we get and the more we experience, the more we, lend to, uh, more we tend to lose our sense of wonder. Things become old hat and we tend to never give them a second thought. For instance, when the South African physician, Kristen Bernard, successfully implanted a mechanical heart in a patient, excuse me, the world was amazed. Later, when actual heart transplants, as well as the transplants of many other organs became possible, the world again took notice. Today, however, in major, major medical centers around the globe, there are thousands of transplants that take place, yet few of us even take notice unless we, or someone we love, is a direct beneficiary of the transplant. The frequency of these medical procedures make them seem routine. Travel and communication are other areas of life that are truly amazing. But again, today, we often fail to notice just how amazing they are. After completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in May of 1869, it was possible for one to travel from one end of the country to the other in just a few days. Today, people can fly anywhere in the world in just a matter of hours. Likewise, at the beginning of the 20th century, people were amazed that they could send a telegram that could be received by the recipient in one day or less, or post a letter that could arrive in a week. Today, mobile phones make it even easier to reach out and touch someone anywhere, anytime. And the internet and email have, for some people, made the post office obsolete. This loss of the sense of wonder can unfortunately be found in our understanding of God and the amazing things that God does for us as well. One of the truly remarkable things about God is that God is ever present in our lives. We can truly always count on God, but because God is ever present, we have a tendency to take God's presence for granted. We fail to truly take notice. We fail to be surprised and our worship mission and ministry can sometimes evolve into just going through the motions instead of truly celebrating the grace of God. That's what makes this all more bewildering to, bewildering to me, is that the pages of scripture are full of wonder and with good reason. Throughout the pages of scripture, God is revealed to be present, active, and gracious in the lives of humanity. God actively seeks us out, and extraordinary things occur where heaven meets earth. In the psalm we read earlier, David is utterly astonished that God cares enough to notice such things as when he sits down and when he gets up, that God discerns his thoughts, that God is acquainted with all of his ways. Later in the psalm, we encounter some of the most beautiful words in scripture. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes behind my unformed substance in your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. In our gospel reading this morning, Philip is so affected by Jesus that he immediately seeks out, seeks out Nathaniel and says, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. We are not told what, in, what, what it was in particular that led Philip to this conclusion, but that is hardly the point. The point is that he encountered the Lord, and in so doing, he felt compelled to share that experience with someone else. One by one, the followers of Jesus met him, were captivated by him, and were compelled to tell others about him. I often wonder if we, have made, if we have lost that passion in our own lives. We have lost the desire, the ability, the ability and the willingness to tell others about just how much the Lord has done for each of us. Do we remain silent for fear of being perceived as fools? Do we zealously protect our faith as something personal and private, forgetting in the process that the only reason we believe is someone else shared their faith with us? Have we somehow forgotten that the good news is spread from person to person and that to remain silent is to squander the gracious gifts that we have been given? Philip went to Nathaniel and simply said, Come, 
and see. Of course, of course, Nathaniel was heartily enthusiastic at first. He asked, can anything co good come out of Nazareth? One can almost hear the cynicism in his voice, as if years of waiting for the Messiah had jaded him to the point that perhaps he had given up all hope. But to his credit, he took Philip up on his invitation to come and see. John reports that when Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. There are two ways of looking at what Jesus said to Nathanael. One is that Jesus catches Nathanael in his sarcasm. Can anything good come from Nazareth? And remarks about his candor. In this case, Christ's words might simply mean, well, here's someone who tells it like it is. Or, Jesus' words could be construed as a comment about the character of Nathaniel. Here's a man who bears no falsehood. At any rate, Nathaniel asks, where did you get to know me? He's astounded to discover that Jesus already knows him. I wonder if that mo at that moment, the words of David sprang to Nathaniel's mind. I wonder if maybe he thought to himself, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. Jesus' reply to Nathaniel about having seen him under the fig tree may have been more than just a factual statement, for the fig was considered the sweetest fruit of the desert people, of the desert people, excuse me. To eat of the fig tree was considered to be a blessing. To have one's fig trees knocked down was considered a curse, for it meant that the sweetest things in life would be taken from you. To say to Nathaniel, therefore, that he had seen him while he was under the fig tree may have been the equivalent of him saying to him, I knew you before you were cynical. I knew you when your heart could still be melted, when your faith was still hungry. That's the Nathaniel that I have seen. That is also the person in each of us that our Lord has seen, beyond the discouragement, heartbreak, and defeat, that there are so much of that, excuse me, and defeat that are so much a part of life, beyond the doubt, disbelief, and disappointment we so often exhibit, is the person whom God knew while we were still in our mother's womb, beyond all the layers of failure, fear, and fallibility, is our Lord. And as John reminds us earlier in the first chapter of this gospel, all things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. This is important for us to remember. For as the one who brought us into being, and who witnessed just how far we had fallen, the word of God incarnate did not see people merely as they were. He also saw them for who they could be. He saw bodies deformed by illness and made them whole. He saw sinners weighed down under the hatred of, his, of this life and set them free. He saw people who had wanted to believe but had been jaded and hardened by an unresponsive world. And to such people, Jesus gave back wonder. And, as if to say, you ain't seen nothing yet, Jesus says Nathaniel will see even greater things. The heavens will open, and the angels of God will ascend and descend upon the Son of Man. In the 28th chapter of Genesis, Jacob has a dream one night, and in which he sees angels ascending and descending a ladder or stairway from heaven. So moved was he by this experience that Jacob uttered, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. As a result of the experience, he named the place where he witnessed those things Bethel, which in Hebrew means the house of God. Jacob seemed to think that this one location was unique, that it was some kind of focal point for the intersection between God and earth. But Jesus is revealing in this passage from John that he himself is where heaven and earth meet. Again, deeper in the chapter, deeper, excuse me, again, earlier in chapter one, John asserts, and the word became flesh and lived among us. God looked at the joys and sorrows, the triumphs and tragedies, everything in short that humanity experiences and said, that's where I want to be. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, heaven and earth meet. His entire earthly ministry bore witness to this truth. His death, resurrection, and ascension bore witness to this truth. The power and the presence of the Holy Spirit today 
bears witness to this truth. The glory of God has been brought to earth. Finite humanity has been brought into the infinite presence of God. There is nothing mundane or commonplace about this amazing truth. Our Lord is always present among us, in the miraculous and in the ordinary, in our successes and our failures. Such knowledge is truly too wonderful for us. David knew that, Philip knew that, and Nathaniel would come to know that. And deep down, I think we all know that as well. We all just need to remind, to be reminded of that every now and then. And if we truly are amazed by the power and presence of Christ in the world, then we cannot help but respond, like giddy children with eyes full of wonder, that they open a treasured gift. We too are to share our joy with the world by issuing the invitation to all we greet, to come and see where heaven and earth meet. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe, using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in our bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings, which once again will be taken electronically this week. You can head to our website, www.centralpresspb.com, look for the Donate Now link, and make your tithe electronically. You also may mail a check or a money order to 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him more to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our, jo uh, share our joys and concerns, which there are uh, a few. Um, Rose uh, Von Tungelen, uh continues to ask us for prayer for Bradley. Um, he is going to have a um, biopsy, I believe he can't remember if he had it in the, the last few days or he's going to have it in the coming days. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so they, he has had the biopsy. They're waiting for results. Um, he also had some fluid on his stomach that they uh, relieved um, and they changed some of his medication to keep his fluid levels down. Um, they drain off four liters of fluid, my lord. Um, and um, let's see. Um, and he slept really well the last several nights, which has been a change. Um, the results of the biopsy should be uh, back sometime next week. Um, we, we are praying that the uh, doctors will be able to find answers to address uh, Bradley's condition. Um, we also uh, want to uh, continue to pray for our country. Um, we also want to, uh, Rose also mentioned that a coworker um, of hers had a nephew that was killed in a tragic accident this week who had several young children. Um, we keep that family in our prayers as well. Um, and we continue to keep um, uh, Benjamin Neal, who is uh, currently at home with COVID, uh, also, I believe Dana Neal uh, also has COVID. 
Um, we're also keeping um, Haley Chandler in our prayers as she continues with her um, her um, chemotherapy for her cancer. And we also continue to keep Laura Festa, Dr. Laura Festa in our prayers as she has entered hospice and um, with her um, Alzheimer's. Um, and I believe that's all we've got for this week. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Uh, please keep Benjamin Neal, Brad Von Tunglin, and Haley Chandler in your caring. Uh, we pray that you uh, heal their bodies, that you provide the wisdom and the, uh, and the strength to the nurses and doctors who are providing um, care to those individuals. Uh, we also continue to pray for our uh, the speedy delivery of vaccine through the world for COVID-19. We continue to pray for those who are suffering from COVID-19. Uh, we continue to pray also for Dana Neal. Uh, we also continue to pray for our, our frontline um, people, our doctors, nurses, retail workers, uh, police and firefighters, our EMTs, our correctional officers, um, all those who are coming in contact with those who are infected uh, please uh, keep those who are infected in your caring. Please provide comfort to those who have lost loved ones due to this disease, uh, which is which are many. Uh, we also continue to pray for our country and our world in the coming days. Uh, we pray for a, uh, a peaceful transition of power this week. Uh, we ask that um, uh, you keep us all safe and um, that cooler heads will prevail. We thank you for all of these, uh, all the blessings that you have provided to us. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. Taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.